Oh, yeah, we're ready. We're recording. And now let me go live on Facebook. Okay. And uh, hello, everybody. Uh, this is our, uh, this is our uh, Monday pop up show that we do at uh, four o'clock in the afternoons. And it's broadcast out on live on Facebook. And it says meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. That's what it says. Okay. And we have, oh, we already have a lot of people waiting to get on here. So let me, uh, oh, here we go. Okay. Oh, all, a lot of the, a lot of the regulars and uh, there's Jeff Stein and there's uh, um, Mike Chisholm and there's Edward Berger. And there, That's right. Uh, oh, uh, Len LaFrisco is down in, where are you? I, oh, he's connecting the audio. Len. Len, we need your audio. Yeah, there we go. How are, is that working? Okay. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Okay, good. And where are you exactly? I am in Cabo San Lucas. All right. Just move the camera around there. Let's see a little bit of it. Just, All uh, right. Oh, so there. there's the hotel. Uh-huh. Uh, beautiful Sea of Cortez. Oh, wow. That's, that's very nice uh, down there. I've never yeah, been to yeah. Cabo San Lucas before. Very southern tip of the Baja Peninsula. And uh, you'll be joined there by Mandy in a few days, right? Uh, yes, I'm hoping to get together with her on Thursday. So uh -huh. that'll be fun. Where is there? Are we back, the only back, ones here? Hold on a second. Mandy's coming on here. Let me get her <laughs> So. Um, uh, and hello really to Jeff really Stein, by the way. Hello to Jeff Stein. Hello to Steve Bender. Hello to Charlie Wallace. Mandy, show her a little bit. Can you see Len LaFrisco <laughs> there, Mandy? This is where you're going to be in a couple of days. I know. He's already messaged me a picture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm a nice guy, right? Uh, yeah. I'm jealous, awesome. I'm, jealous, gonna... I'm jealous of all of you. Yeah. Uh, nah. You know. You know, it's it's been a long time coming. I mean, we we booked this thing so many years ago, and then COVID came, and we couldn't we had to cancel it. And well, so we're I'm finally glad, here. I'm glad you were able to do it before it hits again. Oh, I know. Yeah. Holy crap! I've been watching the news. Yeah, there we uh, go. Okay. Yeah. Omicron's coming. What? Yeah, Omicron. Uh, it's not, this is getting to sound like some kind of uh, of uh, <laughs> a Marvel movie. Yeah, right. You know, the Avengers versus Omicron. <laughs> yeah. How's the weather, Len? Uh, Eighty-three, <laughs> sunny, low humidity, oh. and all the cocktails I can drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> And, uh, and in fact, uh, in fact, I have a Long Island iced tea right here, just in case anybody. Hello needs to, to Shecky. <laughs> Shecky's here. Uh, uh, how you doing, Sheck? I'm fine. Feeling better because I was going to come out this weekend, and you were kind of like, uh, eh. "Yeah, I feel better." Yeah, yeah. Um, you, in fact, you, you, your stomach was bothering you so much that you couldn't eat a Thanksgiving meal. That's oh. correct. At a very fancy schmancy hotel. At a very expensive hotel. Yeah. Hotel. Uh, the Pen uh, what is it called? The peninsula. Peninsula. Oh, I've eaten there. What, we've it's eaten there. Festival. Remember, we went there because your bosses gave us a ticket or something? No, because I gave them a lot of business. So they gave me a dinner for two. Oh, yeah. Okay. It was really nice. We did a couple big things there, yeah. events. Yeah. Yeah. Steve Bender, you're in New York. Ever been to the Peninsula Hotel? I have not. You I, know can't afford, I can't afford that. Oh, really? <laughs> My brother can, not me. It's that famous for being that expensive? It's oh, yeah. Reputation. Yeah, yeah. Our guys stay there. Your guys stay there. Yeah, but your guys are rich. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my brother's suite is larger, and you've been to my house, Alex. To me, it's larger than my second story of the house. Wow. Hmm. Is it bigger than our apartment? No. Oh, okay. nothing's bigger than your apartment. Nothing's bigger than <laughs> What part of town is it in? 
It's on 55th off 5th. Fifth. Fifth. Right at 5th. Oh, wow. And they used to have at the right top. Right at 5th. They used to have a gym club at the top, and a friend of mine was a member there. Well, it's a bar now. Yeah, it used to be a great pool and everything. Mm. Yeah, it's an outdoor bar. I haven't been up there, but it's an outdoor bar. That's what it is now? Yeah. 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 Well, you know. But yeah, I went, I sat at the table with them, and I didn't have the free, the oysters or the crab claws or the... Mm leg of lamb or the lamb shanks the roast beef or you know, go oh. down the list, you know. <laughs> so anyway the uh the um uh, uh, our lawyer is still trying to finalize this whole deal and the other lawyers are holding it up so oh, they're holding it up how do you know that i, I got a me message back you got one too you just don't look I at your mail it. you don't look at your mail <laughs> yeah so it just keeps going on and on, and on. but we'll be okay He'll be fine because the judge. Okay. What? Yeah. 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 The judge made yeah. a decision. Yeah. All right. So that's now it. you're just going to dot the eyes and cross the. Who's not signing it, Alex? It's not that they're not. Both of them. They have they're not they, they, He says they're holding it up. You know, they're they're asking for. He they didn't like the conditions or something that were in there, and he changed them, and you know. But mm, that doesn't, well, in theory, involve you, them still infighting. Between it didn't, it didn't include itself. our, uh, I guess it didn't include, one of the things it didn't include was our, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, security deposit for the, for the new, for the landlords. Okay. It didn't include that. And it didn't include the fact that this other person owes us about $4,000 back in security deposit. Mm. So, uh, it'll 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 happen because the judge said it's got to happen all right? So, right it'll work itself out yeah meanwhile you know we sit here waiting you know things like that so anyway help uh, so steve bender wanted to talk about something today and it's worthy worth right. talking about well i mean i okay. i don't know if everyone will want to talk about it but i was so blown away by the eight hour beetle movie Yes, I was too. Wow. I thought you might have seen it yet. If anyone wants to say anything about it. I mean, not, you know, first I said it's the best music film I've ever seen, but now I'm thinking it ranks with some of the just the best films I've ever seen. Uh, I would wow. agree with you on that, you know, although there are Maybe a lot of great films. Maybe documentary, but not film you've ever seen. I mean, it's, it's a useless <laughs> distinction for me. The amount I was entertained and okay. you know, riveted for eight hours yeah. is remarkable. I'm, God bless Peter Jackson because, you know, oh what he God. did. He did a I'm not a, he did a, he I'm did, not a huge it's fan a superb of documentary. What did you say, Shecky? It said it's a superb documentary. Yeah. Did you watch yes. it all, Shecky, finally? Yeah, I finished it. And yeah. what did you think? It's not Casablanca, but it's a wonderful documentary. <laughs> <laughs> apples, and, apples and oranges. Uh, apples and oranges. Yeah. But, well, no, um, no I, I agree with, with Shecky to this extent, Steve, that you can't compare any of these things against each other. Right. You know? no, I, I, think um, and, and, are, I, let me, I think comparisons are odious, too. I'm just saying for my entertainment value. Then, yeah. that, then that's fine. Yeah. I think that it's the best one of the it's the best movie documentary I've ever music documentary I've ever seen for sure and it may well be one of the best and documentary. You really felt ever. like a fly on the wall. You're like yeah. listening and watching all the drama going on. Yeah, and and it what it's platform a, is it on? It's on Disney. Disney Plus. Disney Plus. Uh, I don't have that shit. Yeah, <laughs> that's seven ninety nine for a month. Then you could cancel. I don't. It. Disney Plus don't is cheap. I don't have that. It's only like money. 70 bucks a year. <laughs> yeah. And they probably give you a free month if you sign up and then cancel. You know. Yeah. 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 You, you can cancel. You know, watch, sign up one month. So you got, you got <laughs> what I thought was amazing was how they took grainy 16 millimeter film, which that was, because I remember yep. the original documentary, which was yep. called Let It Be. Uh, and it was grainy and it was 16 millimeter and you don't get really good stuff out of it. He found a way, he had done a documentary called They Shall Not Grow Old. That was which, great too. Which yeah. was about World War I in which he took World War I footage and he worked on it in such a way 
that you actually started seeing the expression on people's faces and things like that. I mean, mm. it was unbelievable what they did to the film. And that was the test vehicle for what he did with the Beatles, because he took this grainy 16 millimeter film and it looks, you know, it looks 4K. And wow. Even more, maybe even more amazing to me was the sound because, um, you know, I'm a Beatles collector, so I have all those sessions on bootleg. Yeah. And they sound like shit. He actually invented, I was watching you know, an I, yeah, there's a an, an AI to yeah. take all the sound and peel off every individual vocal and every individual instrument, and then they remixed and remastered every part and put it back together. Wow. Yeah. wow. It's wow. stunning. It's, yeah, stunning. it's a stunning piece of work. It's it really, really was. And, and it, it, it's a stunning piece of, and this is interesting, a digital piece of work. Because we didn't have this kind of digital ability even 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he was able to do this now, uh, I mean, if, if people are out there and you haven't watched uh, the, uh, the Beatles documentary, Get Back, it's called, uh, boy, uh, it's, it's just phenomenal. It's just and it also gives you, you know, a kind of different picture because people always think of that period as being very dark and depressing. And the first part kind of was, right? John's clearly in a drug haze. Paul's dominating everything, being bossy. George gets pissed off constantly and leaves. Ringo looks like he's going to fall asleep. But it kind of <laughs> does. When they move out of Twickenham to go to Apple, everything changes. And Billy Preston comes in and John's John again. And, and then by the time they get to the roof, the joy of them playing together, it was just inc an incredible well, art. You know what you see? This is like a couple who get married and they love each other and everything's wonderful. And then things over the years start to fade and they start yeah. to get bad and they start to get issues. And then all of a sudden, one day you get back because you realize what you once were and this is what it's all about when they suddenly start going then they're, they're the four kids who were in germany yeah you know mm -hmm. uh they were the four kids who were in uh, high school or whatever playing as the quarrymen i mean they were they got back to that wonderfulness of what that time was like and you can see yeah, it but where crazy. was pete best where was pete best <laughs> yeah uh, but it was one last time what? It almost feels to me like it was a last hurrah, and what? everyone knew it was kind of a last hurrah, so they kind of went <clears throat> I, I'm about an hour and a half away from being done the whole thing. So I'm not done it yet, but I obviously know how the story ends. Well, I won't, no, spoil, it it. I won't spoil, spoil it for you. We had always heard that, oh. during that, that during that period, they weren't getting along, and it really shows how much they really cared for each other. Uh, the, this, whole process, this whole process, this whole process of trying to create this album and, and trying to create a concert, brought them close book, together again. It, it brought them close together again. And that's well, what I didn't amazing. fairly say that they weren't getting along, which has been the narrative that I've known. Like I didn't connect with the Beatles. I'm a few years later. And so I appreciate this documentary from the the from from the perspective of really, really shedding light on this historical moment. It's it's um, you can't just say they're not getting along like they're a band. It's like a family. They're a family. No, but, but they, eventually, brothers. eventually that happens. In the very beginning, don't you agree, Shaki? They're they're pretty much apart. You know, oh, yeah. Paul is as he said is bossy and and, I mean, and he, John, you know, John is first loaded. I, at first, I didn't like Paul's bossiness, but then I thought if he doesn't do this, no one's sailing this ship, right? He's got to do it. Well, what, they, what, they, what they said yeah. is that when when, uh, when Mr. Klein, do you notice he, they called him Mr. Klein? No, Mr. Epstein. It's Mr. Mr. Epstein. Epstein, Epstein. Epstein. Mr. Epstein died. Not Jeffrey Epstein, folks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he died too. When, when uh, uh, he died, they lost their father. They lost the person who would tell them, okay, you're going to wear this suit today and you're going to cut your hair to this way today and you're going to do this and you're going to do that. And you're going to go here and you're going to go there. And they didn't have any real discipline. This guy created the discipline for them. And when he died, they were adrift. Yeah. And that's that, what you see here is a bunch of people who are adrift and they're trying to find their, their, their base again. And Paul is just getting bossy because he felt, I guess, somebody should. Or yeah, that's the way. Huh? That's four brothers who just lost their father, and now they're yeah. trying to figure out their roles in the new dynamic like, now. Long yeah. lunches. Long whoever decided, lunches. whoever decided to take the most famous band in the world, put them in this 
god awful airplane hangar with tepid tea and toast and demand that they come up with 14 songs in two weeks for a live show. And they're freezing. They're like wearing these. It's January. It's January in London. It's freezing. It was the worst place for them to have (laughs) when they went into a small studio. This was where they always were used to being. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. this was their home sometimes for days at a time, weeks at a time, you know. Uh, and all they wanted to do was a very simple album. They wanted to do something that they did live as a take that was then released, you know, not none of the mm-hmm. backward tape stuff and all of that that they had suddenly come to do in most of their stuff and the big orchestras and so on. However, when the album was finally released, when, when they tried to release it, they said, this album's a mess. Somebody needs to come in and mix it. Bill and Spector. Produce it. So they brought in Phil Spector. Mm. And he added an orchestra to two tracks, to the Let It Be and Long and Winding Road. And Across the Universe also. There's did he do of, that too? Yeah. A lot of additions. Uh, but he did make that album okay. I mean, he, 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 you know, but I mean, I just think, you know, it's interesting. I don't know if you found this to be true. I think what do you think the best song was they came up with in that session? Oh, God. oh you said it to me yesterday. Yeah, I told you yes. I mean, I really was like it, across was the Commonwealth. Board. Is that what it was called or something? Oh no, 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 no. That's another thing we haven't brought up. That that, oh, that was great. Commonwealth was great. never was released on the album. It was just something that Paul was singing about racism in 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 England. Right. And. I think they should release that as a single now. You know, you know and that has always been thought to be kind of you hide that because it's a he's sing, he's being racist by singing "Get Out, Pakistanis," but he was making fun of Enoch Powell and the whole thing. People, you know, I, I don't think people would get it. I think they, you know. Yeah, no, it was. And then what's so common about the Commonwealth? I think it's the big last <laughs> line or something. But I mean, uh, it was a put down of England and the way they were treating Pakistanis. Yeah. And, and yeah, but, a lot of other but today, as um, Steve just said, who today would get it as that? Yeah, right. there's no context, irony anymore. Context means nothing today, right? So yeah, yeah, I guess uh, the movie they have the context because they show the headlines that they're reading and how that's affecting them. But I think the best song they came up with in that whole album is just a good rock song. Is one after nine oh nine. Well, they've been doing that since Hammer. Well, they, that was a song they sang in the very beginning of their career. Yeah. John and, said he wrote, they, that when he, was, he wrote that when he was 15. Yeah, but it's the <laughs> wow. best song, I think, of all of them. It's the most rocking, fun song. You know. Uh, did you get to see it at all, Steve? Trucker Steve? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Do you have Disney Plus? I don't. Yeah, it's pretty I good. I was wondering about um, George Martin's role. Why didn't he step up a little bit as the adult in the room? He because did, he did. He, he did, but he was always the adult in the recording studio. He wasn't the recording studio. But he also studio. had worked for with other bands. I mean, he had, a, can I call it a day job? Yeah, I mean, he seems to have delegated this one to Glenn Johns, right? Who was trying his best. And try, also interesting the way Glenn Johns tried to warn them off Alan Klein, tried to warn John off Alan Klein. Well, they, that comes into it. That's what's so interesting. Is this is when they first exploded. had their meetings with Alan Klein oh. that eventually broke them up because Paul went with his br- brother in law. Father in law, father and brother in law. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, the rest of the Beatles went with Klein. Uh, and you know, I mean, I would have given them the same advice. I mean, Klein was kind of known as a crook, yep. you know. Yeah, he had a guy with him who was his assistant, Pete Bennett, who I knew quite well, and I liked Pete. He was, he was a fun guy, but he looked like a gangster, you know, and acted like a gangster. Well, I, that's, I think that's what John liked about Alan Klein that he had this street cred kind of thug mob kind of guy. He was very street, and John liked that. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Uh, uh, but hey, look, see, have you ever told you whatever gets you through the night story on this four o'clock show? I don't know if I have. This, this is a story that got back to me. Okay, that I uh, that I I can't say as absolute truth, but I was told that uh, whatever gets you through the night. But you all know the Lennon song, whatever gets you through the night, was inspired by my radio show. 
Wow. Uh, because supposedly one night John was listening to the program. This is what I'm told. And I, I was talking to some caller and he was talking about something or another, blah, blah, blah. blah. And I said, well, whatever gets you through the night. <laughs> wow. Great. That's great. And uh, I, don't rem- I don't remember saying it because I said so much stuff on radio, you know. Uh, I wish I could go back, find an old tape and isolate it, but we didn't even record all those shows. In those That's great. Uh, how, but I, how well I, I did was told that song was written because he was listening to me when he, uh, hey, that sounds like a good title for a song, you know. <laughs> wow. Yeah. How well did you know John, Alex? I mean, I, I knew him. A... I, I, I would like to say he was a friend, but it wasn't that. He, he was an acquaintance. Uh, okay. And he was a person I'd bump into at parties and we'd talk for a bit. I talked with Yoko more than I ever talked with him. Uh, hmm. She was really the brains of the outfit. Absolutely. And he was a he was a savant because he, if you met John, people always ask me, well, what was John like? And I said, if you met him, you'd think he was stupid. <laughs> you know, he was just kind of dumb. But when it came to writing huh. songs, he was brilliant, you know. So he was a savant. Uh, she, on the other hand, was sharp as a whip, smart. She's an intellectual. She's and I got to say this, yeah. one of the sexiest women I've ever met up with in my life. Now, people really? Call, but, yeah, re- that's what they say. Really? <laughs> if you met her in person, um, you'd have to kind of hide your crotch so nobody saw your boner. Okay? <laughs> Let me put it that way. <laughs> She had this moment. Real. When I first met her, I said, I see what John sees in her. I see why he's so, you know, mesmerized by her. I mean, I, wow. I was fortunate enough to spend some time with her as well. And I, I won't talk about the sexiness, but the intelligence and the kindness. I mean, the, the way this woman is treated by the public, you know, it's unbelievable given yeah. that all yeah. he ever, has ever talked about is peace and art. And you might not like her voice or like her art. That's fine. But the hatred is unbelievable to me. Well, a lot of people were saying that she ruined John. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is John ruined her because she was a very well-respected artist in New York. Yeah. She was doing shit with John Cage at Carnegie Hall before she met John. And that wailing and crying that she did. Uh, No, I understood it, though. I understood it. Because if you put it Uh. in the context of John Cage... And the whole New York City setting, yeah. she was she was experimenting with music, screaming, Alex. It was terrible. I love it, I, I love it too. I, I love it too. And I said on the radio, I said on the radio that I felt that someday what she was doing, other people would be doing. And later on, people like Lena Levitch came along and were doing what she was doing essentially. Uh, and John always credited me with that. He, she, he said, Alex is the only person who really truly recognized her her, her worth musically. And I wow. understood it. I understood it completely. But it's- yeah, a, I mean, it's, it's I mean, Marjorie, you know, it's not for everyone, right? It's, it's very avant-garde. And if, if, you uh, don't like, if you don't like avant-garde music, there's probably a lot of free jazz you wouldn't want to listen to either, right? Because you don't like right, that. Right, 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 if you right, went and heard right. some of the stuff John Cage did, you'd go, you scratch your head. You know. Even Ornette Coleman and Albert Ayler and people like that just yeah. you know, squawking yeah. away. You know, it's, it's free expression, but you know, it's not everyone's bag. Yeah, sure. Um, but what I thought in the documentary that was very evident, she like stuck to him like glue. It was like they, oh, he, he, she was a shadow of John everywhere he was. She was right within three room. inches of him at all time. You know, and nobody at, seemed his, to be, at, at his request, though, right? Yeah, but and nobody seemed pissed by it. Yeah, right. And Linda Eastman was there every once in a while. And brought her kid. I was surprised when Paul talked about Yoko being there. He was pretty kind about it. He was like, you know, he, yeah. he loves her. You know, he, I, I don't think any of them disliked Yoko. Yeah. You know, uh, and and they were going to like Yoko anyway because their friend liked Yoko. Yeah. You know, it, it, what you do with friends. Sometimes you ever have a friend who's going out with a woman and she really is, or a guy and she, she they're really somebody you don't really like that much but you're gonna like them because they're your friend likes them you know and you're respecting your friend so but well you try to anyway 
Yeah, but the film is just very revelatory in in uh, in, in in its exposure of what was really happening between them at that time, and for you to be able to analyze the behavior. Yes, Mike. Oh, I okay. So for you guys who have seen the footage that has been released up to this point on bootleg or whatever, there's a part in I think it's in part two where Paul even says. Um, he says the line, oh, well, 50 years from now, they're going to talk about the idea of us breaking up because Yoko sat on an owl. Or I think that was the line. It was something yeah, like that. Yeah. Had that line been released out beforehand? Because, I mean, I see that context of that line. And it's like, he's being, oh, it's ridiculous that people are like, but it's so funny because that's actually kind of what happened. If you ask people in Gen X, why yeah, the he was, he was predicting it, the future for David. Yeah, Shaki, so isn't, this a, this isn't that a perfect example of uh, if you have a, a the truth of the legend, print the legend? Oh, yeah, you know, oh, we yeah. printed the legend about Yoko and the breakup of the Beatles and all right. of that, and really, I don't think she had anything to do with it. I think, uh, no, it was I, their time, they were and he was being worked together for 10 years, like yeah. whatever it was. It yeah. was yeah. their time, absolutely. Uh, Martin, yeah. I said to you the other day, Martin and Lewis, 10 yeah. years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so was that think... line out before this documentary? That's no, I've never heard that before. That even on the not... legs that you, even it's on the bootleg. on the bootleg recordings of the recordings, are mostly music, and it's not in the original film. Okay. The most okay. amazing thing to me was that conversation that was secretly taped between John and Paul in the flower. Yeah. Yes. When do you when do you think Paul found out that that existed? Did he know about that before the movie? Probably not. <laughs> That's a great one. You know, I mean, supposedly they, you know, they were all involved. Yeah. The, the wives of the two dead ones and oh, uh, everyone, everyone has an executive producer credit. Right. Yeah. yeah. So they were all aware of what was being done and how it was being done. And they all, I think, when they saw it, they totally approved of how it came out. Oh no, they could have right. just said to Peter but Jackson, it, take it, it out. Right. But was it the screening room where he found that out in order to approve it, or was it along the production line? Like uh, I read an article somewhere about there's one of John Lennon's songs what, what, that Paul what, helped him write, but it came out to be a John Lennon song in the end. And Paul completely forgot that he helped John actually write that song until he saw the movie, yeah. which is crazy. Well, a lot of the songs they were doing wound up on some of their solo albums. Teddy Boy wound up on McCartney. All Things Must Pass was the title track on All Things Must right. Pass. That's yeah, the one. Had, That's the one. He even had backseat of my car from Ram. I was surprised to hear him doing that in this session. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of this stuff, and, and a lot of this stuff wound up on Abbey Road. A lot of it. Lot yeah. Of it. You know, so. I but mean, McCartney said that he forgot completely that he helped John write that song until he saw this documentary. Well, in deference to all the other people here who haven't seen this documentary, <laughs> we probably should go on to other topics. Yeah. But, uh, Worth it. It's really good. <laughs> Mandy, I, I, at your age, how how much were the Beatles a part of your life? I guess they weren't really, were they? They were. I mean, to an extent, I remember um, like they, I guess, kind of made a resurgence or there was like, I don't know, something about the whole thing with mm -hmm. Paul McCartney being dead. <laughs> you know, and it may have been after that time, after John Lennon. I remember, I remember where exactly where I was when I heard John Lennon got shot and, and got killed. Um, but my older stepbrothers and sisters, they like they like the Beatles, and so they, I definitely they were far more aware of the Beatles and who they were and their yeah, influence and so on. So it was near like yeah. well, the, the, Paul is the, the Paul is dead thing. Um, started on my show in New York. I actually didn't mm -hmm. start on my show in New York. It actually started at a university out in the Midwest somewhere. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I think and it's one day brighter. somebody calls me up on my show and says, do you think Paul McCartney is dead? I said, what? They said, well, here are the things they found out about. And this was all these rumors coming out of this university in, in, in the Midwest. And so we spent a whole night talking on the subject, okay? Mm looking at albums and trying to determine if he was dead or not and whatever and so the whole backwards so, thing i was fascinated yeah. by it i was but, yeah. but well, we, we did that for one night and then the next night i didn't do it because that was last night right <laughs> now a month passes and some guy over at wabc brings it up and i'm coming into work one night and somebody says i'm getting calls saying are you going to talk about the paul is dead rumor I said, well, I already did that a month ago. 
And they said, no, now it's all of a sudden it's exploding. So I, you know, I opened up my show then. I remember the first line I had is, where's Paul McCartney tonight? I remember. I <laughs> Do you and, remember the do you remember the TV special? There was a TV Paul is wow. dead TV special with F. Lee Bailey. F. Lee <laughs> Bailey. As the I remember that. Whatever he yeah. anyway, <laughs> presenting the case. So I did this for it's QAnon for QAnon. I love it. I did this for two nights. <laughs> I did this for two nights in a row. Five hours, four hours of I think mm-hmm. or five hours. I can't remember. Uh, 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 one in the morning until six in the morning or five in the morning, whatever. I can't remember the time. But we were, it was all like, you know, looking at album covers and playing stuff backwards and doing all of that. Okay, we did this for two nights. (laughs) Now my boss calls me up the next day and says, can you do it one Are you going to do the Paul is Dead thing tonight? This will show what a whore I am. And I said, no, I think we've we've had enough of that. You know, I just felt I didn't want to play it to death, okay? They said, well, if you can do it for one more night, we'll send you to England to see if he is. <laughs> oh, shit. So I, I, um, uh, I, I, so I, the whore that I am went, sure I will. <laughs> uh, and in those days, if you went to England, you had to have your shots first. You had to be yeah. vaccinated for all kinds of things, right? Just like today. Yeah, but well, like today, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and so uh, I, uh, and I didn't have a passport. So the next morning, it was like I was in boot camp or they were rushing me through boot camp. Okay, so I went and I got the shots and I got the passports and the pass and somebody knew somebody at the passport bureau so we could force them through. And uh, they, at 530 in the afternoon, they shoved me on a plane out of JFK and uh, going to England. And I'm so jazzed up by all this. I can't sleep on the plane. <laughs> now I arrive in New York and it's Friday. And if I, don't, if I don't get some kind of a story <laughs> on Friday, I'm dead because, you know, who's going to be around on Saturday and Sunday? So I, rather than go to sleep in the hotel, immediately rush over to Apple, okay, where I meet up with Derek Taylor, who was the head of publicity there, knew I was coming. And I sat there and I'm, I'm, I'm in a daze. I mean, I've been on an airplane. I've got jet lag. I'm falling. It just, you you know what I'm saying. I'm just a mess. And I start to interview people. And Derek says, well, maybe a beetle will come in and you can talk to one. And so I'm sitting there and and over uh, on one side of me are some Hare Krishna people singing Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And Derek Taylor says, hey, you want, you want to try some hash? Oh, Okay, so he lights up a bowl of hash and I take a puff off of it. And I am just, I'm tired, I'm loaded, I'm, I'm just completely fucked. And I'm trying to get a story at the same time. Uh, and I uh, went to, um, uh, uh, all of a sudden he says, Ringo's here. Good. I'll go interview Ringo. Okay. They send me down to interview Ringo. I'm like, hi, Ringo. I turn on the recorder. I start asking him questions. We're halfway through the interview, and I can't remember. I can't even think of another question. I just go (laughs) blank. And finally, I, I, I look at Ringo, and I said, hey, man, I'm sorry, but I am just wrecked. And he said, you look it. (laughs) <laughs> but then i got it together and we finished the interview um and how i finally just found out that i came up with a way to end the whole story so that we could say we found out whether he was alive or dead or not okay mm-hmm. that uh in all that he uh, i went talk to his barber and his barber said it is paul i said how do you know he said he has his hair breaks in a certain place he says, when you have a part, your hair breaks naturally. It doesn't change. You can't get rid of it. You know, the part is where the part is. You can't part it suddenly in the middle without it eventually wanting to go to the other part. And he said, if you look at any of the pictures, his hair is part of there, unless the photograph's been reversed, but it's still pretty much in the same place. And so we use that as our proof that he was still alive. And I got 
that. Alex, I, I want to ask you, Alex, because um, they've always, the Beatles always, to this day, right, they always deny that they had anything to do with that rumor. But obviously they must have. Those clues are on the records, right? There is that backward shit. You play it, it does well, say. You know, I don't agree with you. I don't agree no. with you. I, I, I don't think don't, they knew. I don't, uh, no, I don't. I think they let it. They didn't try to dissuade people from doing it. But, you know, if you listen to anything over and over and over again, eventually it will suit what you're trying to find. Yeah. You know, uh, and I, th I think that's you play that I'm... number nine, number nine backwards. And it says, turn me on dead man. Damn it. It does. I've no, done it. If you I've play it backwards, it, goes, it, it backwards. It goes, yum, 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 yum. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> there's too, there's too many, too many clues for it to be inadvertent. Yeah. Well, I don't think they were doing that. I think. That okay. People... Is there a chance they heard the rumor and then for future projects, them and some of the production guys decided to have some fun. I mean, and they had fun with it because yep. like John would sing, here's another clue for you all, the walrus was Paul. So they were having fun no, with but, it. But, yeah, but Again, it's right. up, that was on. recorded after the Paul right. is dead room. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, but it was, it was, at least it was the first time I ever got to Europe. So uh, the whore got to go to Europe. Yeah. I mean, they also, <laughs> said, they, they also said Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds was not LSD. Yeah. I mean, come on. Well, he, the, the John claims yeah. the drawing. John, I know the story. John claims that the kid came home with a drawing, and he said, "What is that?" And the kid said, "Lucy in the sky with diamonds." And it just so happens that the most psychedelic song ever written <laughs> has been in the LSD. Well, we didn't we didn't, I, we didn't mention that maybe his kid was on acid. We didn't say that. Right. No. Um, <laughs> were you welled up in that period, Shecky, with all the Paula's day? Oh yeah. Yeah, you were. Okay. All right. I saw the Ashley Bailey special. Oh, okay. Did I know <laughs> you then? We're, no. no. No, no. That was that was while I was still Oh, no, this early. is 60, late 60s, yeah, this early is WMCA. 70s, late 60s. Yeah, this is WMCA. Funniest thing I remember on that special, one of the clues they showed, they showed a life the new life magazine which was dealing with the issue and had Paul on the cover. Mm -hmm. And they said if you hold it up to the light, you can see the car that killed him. So I run out of oh, magazine, and there's like a Chrysler ad on the back a, a page opposite. Oh. <laughs> well, I so dislike Paul as an artist that I almost wished he was dead. Oh, stop. You know, oh, oh, wow. <laughs> Place that when I started hearing about it, it was, I, I just distinctly remember it being Casey Kasem. So he kind of like oh, brought. Geez. Oh, he was he way late to the table. Special. I don't know what you're talking about. That must. This was early. This was like in the later 70s, like 77, 78. You know, like it was almost like Casey Kasem was trying to bring it back. This happened and, in. Uh, this happened in about 71, actually. Yeah, this was yep. much like. It's almost like it made some little co mini comeback, like they were trying to talk about it again or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. but uh, it was. You know, it was. It I have was a question. Fun. Yeah. I, this is a theory I've always had because I'm a 76 baby. I was born in 76. And so I was also a Gen X kid when it came to music. And I always had three comparisons. And maybe this will, maybe someone here is a music lover and they might be able to say it. I always said Gen X, our Beatles is U2, our Pink Floyd is Radiohead, and our Doors is Nirvana. Does that make sense Ooh. to anybody else on the show? I go more Nirvana with the last being two. Doors, I, I go. Yeah, I go more with the last two than the first one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So who would the who would the Beatles be of 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 Gen X then, if that were the case, if not you two? It, they've got it's got to be any a group that was a seed changer. I mean, the Beatles came along and changed everything in music. Yeah. They just if just by their existence, they they bent things yeah. in a certain direction, and all of a sudden it was hip to be experimental. You know. Okay. Uh, and I would have argue long hair. Was, that was a big double, thing. What were you saying, Marjorie? What? They had long hair. That was like a major hair. thing when they came when it came on Ele uh, uh, Ed Sullivan's show. Yeah. yeah. I, I went out. I bought a. I don't know if there is a genetic. Uh, when I was in the Navy, I bought a a, 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 a collarless jacket. Uh, and, uh, it was mm. a Aru jacket. No, it was a collarless jacket. Aru? No, it was a collarless jacket. And I was, was walking through jacket. the. I was walking through the. Uh, the parking lot at uh, uh, Armed Forces Radio, and somebody said to me, "Who do you think you are, a Beatle?" <laughs> that was the first time I ever heard of the Beatles. Really? And what's really? a Beatle? And they said, "Oh, it's a, it's a music group. Haven't you seen it? What they have. They're, they're, on, they're on the what news." What year was that? Uh, what year was that? Uh, well, if I had, this had to be 
what when was 64 maybe 64 well that's when they came to america 64 64 yeah maybe maybe 63 yeah 63 it went to say stadium but I, I don't know if there's a Gen X analogy for the Beatles because you'd need a you know a game changer and what was what's the big game change after post Beatles would be punk so maybe like the Clash but it's, there's nothing oh, else. the Clash you know, the, the, the Cars Clash something yeah you know let me put it this way if you had a if you had to uh, compare uh, the Beatles in their job in history replaced Elvis. Elvis right. was a big seed changer in the 50s. In the right. 60s, mm -hmm. it was the Beatles. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there was any seed changer in the I mean, There was punk. There was the Sex Pistols in the Clash. Right? That well, was yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Ramones. Yeah, the Ramones. Yeah. yeah. Um, but none of those became but, the but, end of the world. But the that Ramones, technically, technically right. the Ramones were the... the uh, what what year were the Ramones out? The seventy six. Seventy six. Uh, the Ramones were the uh, the Beach Boys in the seventies. Yeah, you listen to their music. Yeah. There's a lot of Beach Boys there, really. Yeah, just listen to Rockaway Beach. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, um, uh, I I th I often claim to see if anybody agrees or disagrees with this. If the Beatles hadn't come along, somebody else would have been been the Beatles. In other words, we were ready well, yeah. for that. Well, the Stones. We had the Rolling Stones. Well, yeah, Rolling yeah. Stones. Yeah, you had the sure. Rolling Stones. And you had Elvis right before. Well, I mentioned Elvis as being the big seed changer in the fifties, because he what what he really represented was taking a, a creating a area of music that was listened to and was made for teenagers. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Before that, before exactly. that, there was no teen culture. Before then, also, kids acted also, like their parents. You know. We also saw yeah. a lot of black music. Right. Now, although I hate saying it, maybe gospel music. Yeah. I, I hate saying it, but maybe the answer to Mike's question is Michael Jackson. Oh, there you go. You know, I, yep. he was. I don't like. He's a big game changer. You know, with those albums. I'm gonna have to think about the 70s, that. More the 80s, isn't it? Game changer. What about Van Halen with the way uh, guitar was played, you know, from Hendrix to Eddie? Yeah. yeah. If you want I to talk about guitar that, players, yeah. yeah. In terms of guitar players, for sure, yeah. Um, I, I'm, you know, I, I, ju I just think the Beatles kind of were leading, leading the parade on everything. Psychedel Ryan, psychedelic Ryan, music. Turn your volume off. Turn your volume Our down, because there's wind coming into it. Sorry. I think... Pink uh, Floyd are, are, are the same. I think I think my older sister who loved the Pink Floyd, mm -hmm. she feels the same way that I feel about Radiohead, and it's very similar the feelings. So that, I think those, that makes sense. Those two I would agree I, with. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it, 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 it you know, but all I'm saying is is that, that, that something was bound to come along at that time because it, people were ready for it. And but what I'm saying with Elvis and what went on in Elvis's period was this whole thing about creating stuff for teen culture okay yes. uh and and before that uh, i think shecky will agree with me if you go back to the 40s what were teenagers like they went from being a kid to dressing Good like their parents yeah there was no teen culture i mean there was well, there, there women in their 20s looked like women now doing their sick 60s right, but, but there yeah. were the there were there were the bobby Soxers and sinatra sinatra yeah. was yeah. the elvis of that time i mean right. i, I uh, often said every 10 years something happened yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but we were the greatest generation i don't care what you said <laughs> <laughs> so I, I mean the of game changing course. thing about the beatles was the songwriting right they, people yeah. didn't write their own songs elvis didn't sinatra didn't and here are these kids writing these amazing yeah, you're songs. right you're right yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, singer they're, songwriter yeah, yeah yeah which was the best thing to be because you know you not only got the performance royalties but you got the, the music royalties <laughs> as well well dick james got the money but yeah. yeah well i remember how um how it was all apportioned out in those days and the artists got three cents aside and the composers got three cents aside they also got money from radio stations because what radio stations had to pay for was the rights to play something via the publishing 
uh, and the, uh, but not to the performer. In other words, when we were paying out money every year to, after, uh, uh, to uh, BMI and ASCAP, we were paying not performers, we were paying writers. No, but the performers put their names on the albums as composers. Well, eventually, but not- No, the go back to the teens, Jolson, mm -hmm. all those people, you'll really? see, it'll say George Gershwin dash Al Jolson. It'll say Cole well, Porter. The reason dash. they did it was for exactly that reason. Yeah. Right. You know, but uh, uh, you know, when you start thinking about people who prior to the Beatles wrote their own songs that they performed, you had Neil Sedaka in the 50s, you know, who was. Yeah, but he more. was not a big performer, so to speak. Right. He did perform. Yeah. But he, he, he performed on his records. They were Neil Sedaka. He, he was writing for other people in the Brill At Building. That too. But, yeah. you know, if you were a writer and you could write your own songs and you had hit songs that you wrote, you can write for anybody. So why not spread the wealth around and have everybody making you money? Because the person who writes the song had more ways to make the money. Look right. at look at Len. Doesn't he look regal there in the in paradise? <laughs> <laughs> With his arms crossed, he looked mighty. Yeah. How many right, days, second. Mandy? How many days are you going to be down there? I leave Wednesday morning, and I'll yeah. be there till Saturday. Till Saturday. Okay. Where are you going? Long? I will. Is she I going the same place that Len is? Yeah. There's going to be one one resort up from me. So yeah. yeah together where are you yeah, I can't gonna... and he's going to see her as the last resort thank you <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, where? she's going to be last she's going to be that that way about about three miles that way <laughs> yeah so how, do you, how do you guys feel about omicron is that a Michael album? it sounds like the name of a transformer yeah, I know. It sounds, <laughs> it sounds so fucking made up and so fake, it's ridiculous. It sounds like somebody the Avengers would go after. The, Oma, the Avengers versus it's, Omicron. It sounds like a virus that was released by Megatron and Optimus <laughs> Prime is going to show up eventually. <laughs> That'd be exciting. I hope he does. Yeah. But, I mean, all of a sudden, hello, Vernon. Uh, all of a sudden, here in uh, New York, they're saying, wear the masks again. Make sure you wear the masks. No, yeah, but who's telling you to do that? The biggest jackass in America. Who, de Blasio? Yeah. Yeah, but... Yeah. but I Our think... next governor. Uh-huh. Yeah. And Hochul, and Hochul has declared a state of emergency, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Is she going to run for governor, do you think? I'm sure she will Oops. run. She'll run. Maybe I she should won't. say she molested me and she'll then not have a career anymore. <laughs> That's the best way to make somebody not run. Yeah. How's everything well, going? What's you his are? name? That actor in Texas said he's not running. What's Matthew his name? McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. McConaughey. He got his publicity. We we heard his name for the first time in five years. Okay. Matthew McConaughey is running for governor. No. no, he's not. He finally announced he's not. Oh, okay. I didn't know that he was thinking about it. Yeah. Oh, he yeah. wasn't. People were putting his name out there as running. He was the Kanye of Texas. What's his catchphrase <laughs> that everybody does when they do an impression? All right, 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 Oh boy, yeah. Your governor down there is really a piece of work, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? You know. I don't know. He, he's up for re-election next year. Well, what's his name's going to run against him, right? Um, Beto. 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 You think he has a good shot? No, you, you really, people in Texas are, have gotten that stupid. Yeah, so maybe they're, they're worse worse now. people in Texas have remained that stupid. Plus, mm -hmm. they've got all the anti voting laws and stuff they just passed. There's no way a Democrat could win. Wow. Well, how, do, how does limiting how people can vote, how does that help the, de the Republicans, though? Because you all the ways the Democrats vote, like they're you. making illegal. Right, you okay. don't let black people vote because they're going to vote yeah. for Democrats. Yeah, okay. All right, all right. I'll buy it. They, they cut the early voting in half. Mm -hmm. They got rid of Sunday voting. Yeah. So... You can't give anybody refreshments while they're in line. No. And, and, and you, yeah, you can't drive people to the polls anymore. 
You can't go out and, 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 and register voters. Unbelievable. Can't have voter registration drives anymore. Mm. Wow. And you can't have an abortion while you're voting. So, you know, <laughs> getting ridiculous, getting ridiculous. How are you yes. doing, Vernon, down there in uh, your part of your neck of the woods? I'm hanging in there. My daughter just uh, moved into a new condo, so she's no longer an apartment dweller. Oh, she bought a condo. Yeah. Oh, good for her. All hey, by I herself, just found, too. Really? I just found out that my family comes from Kentucky, both sides. Wow. Back in what? the 1850s or something, they lived in Kentucky. What did you do? Find out from uh, Ancestry.com? I went on Ancestry.com. <laughs> That's what I spent Thanksgiving doing. <laughs> did you pay for it? Yeah, I paid for it. You sent your spit away? No, I'm not doing that part. That goes out of You did it, Alex, remember? Yeah, and they, my spit wasn't good enough. They sent it back and said, we need more spit. <laughs> We and then, then, then I guess they send my spit to the Chinese, who then put it in their database. Remember what that exactly. was happening with the with wow. Ancestry dot com. You know, so. a friend of mine set us up on Ancestry dot com, and and since then I've added nine thousand people to my family tree. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> really? Uh, we, we, the we, most we, famous. The most famous is uh, my fifth great grandmother on my father's side was. Daniel Boone's older sister. Wow. <laughs> wow. Boy, is that wow. remote. Yeah. Uh, here, here, well, here's what happened with us. Marjorie says, let's anyway. Okay, so we get their kit and we get put the spit in the bottle and we mail the spit back to the Mormons. Okay. Mm -hmm. They get the spit, they analyze the spit. They send my spit back to me and say, would you spit again, please? I spit again. Then they finally said, we finally have your, your results. It's online. So we went online and it said there that I was uh, uh, in 99% in Jewish. Right. <laughs> and I went, I just spent in those days, it was like uh, 80 bucks, 90 bucks. I spent 90 bucks to find out I'm Jewish. <laughs> and then they show me where I'm from, and it's the place where my father was born and everything. Born. I mean, but they didn't tell me anything I didn't know already. Yeah, but you won't get vaccinated because you don't want people knowing this stuff. But I'll spit in a bottle and send it off. To <laughs> yeah, you. yeah, yeah. Somebody. Well, you know, I think it, it looks like people are starting to give up on that whole thing about, well, we do this is untested, this stuff, you know. Uh, and then you uh, tell them, well, you know, 60%, what is, what do we have? 60% now and then vaccinated? Charlie, quick. Something like that. Oh. I think Biden said 71 in his speech this afternoon. 71? So 71% so of America are fully vaccinated. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. And the rest are football players. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or cops. Yeah. <laughs> they don't well, want to get vaccinated. They don't have time to get shots shecky because they're too busy beating up their girlfriends yeah you know what is with these football people beating up on their girlfriends is it because <laughs> they, were they are trained just to kill. huh they were trained to kill and they and they you don't just get rid of it when you stop playing football yeah well it's like it's like people we send off to war to kill and then we expect yeah. them to come back and not kill nobody goes and turns off a switch and doesn't make them killers anymore exactly you know, um, but uh, we're watching this show. Uh, uh, you, you anybody you. seen this? Um, funny. I think this season has gotten very funny. It's gotten very funny. We're yeah. only on the first. We're only on the first oh, season. We're I'll wait till you get to the third. <laughs> and we're into finishing the the first season. First. And it's produced by a guy that we watch all, almost all his shows, right, Sheck? Berlanti. Uh, Greg Berlanti. This guy has, I looked it up last night, more TV shows yeah. on the air right now than any human being alive. Hmm. Cool. More yeah. than Dick Wolf? More than yeah. Dick Wolf. Even more than Dick Wolf. More than Dick Wolf. He's based more. Steven Bochco. Uh, it, it, um, it, but I mean, we're talking, what, 15 shows, something like that really? right wow. now? It, Titans, Doom Patrol, all the DC shows, Flash, yeah. and, and, uh, and we go on and on and on. It's just amazing how many shows this guy's got. And then I turn on this thing, you, and at the at the beginning, it goes, produced by Greg Berlanti. Oh, give me a break. 
<laughs> Sarah Sheckman, I think, is the other person that works with him. Uh, and uh, it, it, but uh, it, it's a good little show, the fun show. You know. No relation to Shecky? No. Okay. No. Mm. Greg Berlanti? No, Sheckman. You said, oh, no, you said Sarah Sheckman. No, I don't think so. I think, yeah. I well, get ancestry.com on the case. Nobody's the related to Rick Sheckman except his brother that I know of. You know, because uh, you never talk about any other relatives to me. Yeah, I've got them, but what am I going to tell you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I told you my cousin was the model for Gordon Gecko. Oh, Robert, that's good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> yeah. He was yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, in Wall Street in the eighties, he was became was the quote model or one of the models for Gordon Gecko. He believed the greed was good. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shecky comes from what a banking family, right? No, actually, the rag business. Really? Oh. Yeah. Well, that's a tradition. My, my grandfather on my father's side was a butter and egg man. Oh really? Yeah. Well, so, but your father was a was a banker. Well, he was in the rag business and then went to Wall Street in '68, I believe it was. Oh, really? Yeah. How, how do you go from to begin with? What is quickly <laughs> from rags to rags? riches? Yeah, yeah. Rags yeah. To riches. <laughs> you know, it's, it's garment mm. business. Is it the garment sure. business? Is that yes. the garment district? Yeah. 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 People said. You know, uh, uh, Kirk Douglas wrote a book uh, called The Rag Seller's Son or something. Uh, he was, his father was in the rag business too. And I'm going, who, who sells rags? Why do you sell rags? <laughs> but is that just a, is that just kind of a... a, a Euphemism. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's, for the for the it's for the garment it's industry. industry. It's the garment industry. So what did yeah. he do in the garment industry? Well, my grandfather... I don't want to, not really, he had, my grandfather had like seven stores in New Jersey and New York. My father had a store in, um, in New Brunswick. Mm -hmm. And then my, when that, my, and then my father worked for a company called Franklin Simon, which was a department store. Mm -hmm. And when he left Franklin Simon, he went to Wall Street. Wow. Well, he did well on Wall Street too, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, at that point, my father, well, that was what, 68. So my father was born in 21. So my father was in his late 40s, almost 50 by that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What about the relative that was based on Gordon Gecko? How'd he do? Well, he was a multi, 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 multi millionaire. And then moved to Switzerland and opened a art museum. Hmm. And now he's not a multi, multi, multi millionaire. Oh, he's but still he's alive? Cousin. My cousin, my cousin's still alive, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, he sells high priced artwork now. Oh, okay. All right. He has, he has an art gallery on Madison Avenue in the 60s somewhere. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And then, my, then his brother, he doesn't get along with when the market tanked in I guess it was what six in 87 88 lost a billion dollars that day Jesus. a billion a billion how do you feel about it he lost his mind no really he, I think I told you that story he's the one who eventually went to jail broke out of jail went to <laughs> South America and then eventually got caught in like Brazil and went back to jail and then broke out of jail in Arizona or somewhere. <laughs> how, did he, how did he break uh, out of jail? I, I guess he was in a country club jail. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I always use your, your brother as an example to people that I know that your brother had a lot of money and then lost it all. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then went back and made it all back plus. Yes. And yes. what I use him as an example of is once you learn how to make money, it's a process. Once you learn how to do it, you can probably lose all your money and make it back again. And then no, not to overspend. Can I call it if, yeah. if you don't, you know, my brother was making a decent living, but
but he went out and bought a Porsche and he went out and bought a giant house and then he went out and, you know, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden it all went south. Right. He was sleeping on your couch, basically. Oh, yeah. 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 One thing I say to some of my clients uh, is no matter how their business is doing right now, it's always important to take a little bit of money off the table. To avoid no, exactly that's when you're gambling. Uh, if you're playing like I play the blackjack. Yeah. And if I put down a hundred bucks and now I'm up two hundred, I put the hundred dollars in my coat pocket. So you don't walk away having lost anything. Exactly. Well, right. you're playing but what I'm house saying money is, is that, that he was a perfect example of that. Once you learn how to make money, it's a process. And once you learn it, you can make it back again if you're any good at it. You know? Well, because he was a mathematician. And he's using okay. mathematician skills to make money. Wow. Hey, listen, we have, what was that? My, something went ding, ding. Oh, I oh, see. Where are we? yeah. Call hey. the phone, Alex. What? Call the phone. Wait, what do you mean call the phone? <laughs> he says, call the phone. It's five o'clock. No. Uh, Marjorie now has a, I, I gave her a whole watch. She is now has a, 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 a Apple watch that's hooked onto the cellular system. Good. Good. It took us forever to get it on through AT and T, but you know, anytime you have to call AT and T, plan on spending about five days of your life waiting for them. You know. Anyway, hey, listen, we we're running, we're over time here. Uh, Mike Chisholm, thank you so much for calling us from Canada. We appreciate it. Is it proper to say call, or am I being old fashioned? You know. It's like I still call a refrigerator. The other day I called it when I talked to somebody at PC Richards. I called it an icebox. Or the Frigidaire. <laughs> huh? That's a little old. Frigidaire. Wow. The Frigidaire. Well, it is a Frigidaire, actually, the one that I ordered that I haven't gotten yet. Here's what happened quickly. PC Richards took my money. They cashed it because it was taken out of my Amex. They have yet to deliver this thing. Shouldn't they wait until they're delivering it to then go out and getting grab on the, the money? Truck. Huh? Getting on the truck. Sitting on the truck, right. Anyway, well, they- I, I expect it has to do with the fact that nobody's getting anything because of the, uh, you know, the supply sure and demand is. issue. Yeah. Rick, thank you. Thank you. Edward Berger hasn't said a word. Say goodbye. That, that's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> that voice is just perfect. From uh, lovely, uh, where are you again? Uh, Cabo uh, San Lucas. Cabo San Lucas. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. That's where you're going to be, Mandy. Are you drooling already? I'm <laughs> drooling. <laughs> Thank you for I'll, being I'll here. see you Thursday, Mandy. Yeah. Call me. Text me. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh, Jeff, good seeing you again. Charlie, mm-hmm. always great to see you. Steve Bender, you got to come up now and see us, okay? Do it soon. Okay, it's after the holidays. Trucker Steve, how you feeling? Kidney doing good? Or, okay. Good. I go in for surgery on Friday. Surgery for, mm-hmm. so that you have a permanent... Well, they're going to put a, what they call a fistula mm-hmm. in my arm mm-hmm. and connect the veins so they can put needles to do the dialysis instead of have this thing in my chest. Right. And it takes oh, about wow. to heal. Yeah, that'll be good. What, Once you heal, I'll, I'll go into surgery again. This thing. Okay. Well, good. Good they, luck. Essentially, they're putting a USB port in you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, surgery uh, is your friend. Surgery, uh, will I be seeing you soon? Yes. Oh, I'm around okay. I, I just wanted to make sure you still love me. Mandy, uh, thank you so much, Mandy. Always great having you there. And Verda Null, you know you're the best. Well, so is everybody here. These this is a great bunch of people. I love talking to you. And I've run over and I better get going here. So everybody just wave goodbye and I'll wave goodbye as well. See you later. Bye. Have a good week. Bye, guys. See you.